Welcome to lecture 2.4, solving first order inhomogeneous differential equations. So in this lecture, we're going to learn how to solve equations where separation of variables just doesn't work. So to begin, I'm going to start with an introduction about what a linear differential equation is, and this will be important to talk about in the next couple of lectures when we see different methods for how to solve these equations. So recall, in, back from high school algebra, or potentially middle school algebra for some of you, what a linear equation or linear function was. It, it had the form ax plus b, something like this. So now in differential equations, a, we're going to say that a linear differential equation has this form, y prime equals ay plus f, and it's important to note that a and f do not have to be constants. They can be, they can be functions of t. Really what this matters is, is that they don't have any y's in them. So think of this as being linear in y. Now a first order homogeneous linear differential, so a linear equation is moreover homogeneous if this f of t is equal to zero. And it, it's maybe not clear why uh, from here, and just from this definition, why we should allow a t squared, but it, trust me, there is a good reason. It's a little bit beyond the scope of what we're doing right now. We might get to it at the end of the course, though, and it has to do with the fact that we can write differential equations using, or we can write linear differential equations using linear operators, linear differential operators. Here are some examples. So let's go through and and see if these are linear and homogeneous. So this first one is is linear because it, it is of the it is of this form right here. Uh, the second one has has a y squared in there, so that's going to be nonlinear. And the third one's also nonlinear. Because we have a sine of y. And that's not allowed. Now you may be wondering, well, can I write down this, say this is homogeneous? Maybe, I, I guess, but um, homogeneous, really, the only time it's, it's used is, is when an equation is linear. So we don't, it doesn't make too much sense to talk about, it's not useful to talk about homogeneous nonlinear equations. So when I talk about something being homogeneous, I'm assuming it is linear. So I'm just going to write nonlinear for this. Now this is linear. And it's homogeneous. And this last one is, well, there's no y in there at all, so it's it's linear. And it's no, it's it's technically a differential equation, but this is really something that you, you could have solved in integral calculus, just integrate both sides. So it's it's sort of a it's kind of a differential technically a differential equation, but it's something that that you knew how to solve before taking this class. Now, how do we solve homogeneous differential equations? We've seen this. We separate variables. Separation of variables. So let's, let's write this out. So let's, let's suppose we have a, a y prime equals a of t y. So there, here's our homogeneous equation. We're going to write this as dy dt equals a over t times y. Separating variables means that we, we put the y's on one side, dy over y, and we put the t's on the other side, a of t dt. And then we, we integrate. And what we get is we get what well, we get natural log of absolute value of y equals integral of a of t dt. And well, I'm going to put in a plus c in here, though it's a little bit redundant, just to emphasize that maybe I could have maybe I should have written this as as capital A of of uh, yeah maybe maybe I can do that. 
or maybe a of t plus, I like that a little bit better, a of t plus c. So now, the abs we can apply, take the exponential of this whole thing, and we get that the absolute value of y is e to the c times e to the capital A of, yeah, I like writing that better than the integral. Um, and we can do our, our little cheating by turning this into a constant, by getting rid of the absolute values and turning this into a constant C. Remember we talked about this the first lecture of section 2. And write this as C E to the capital A of T. And again, this is technically a different C than, than that is. I'm just re-Christianing this constant to be that. And I'm allowing it to be negative because I'm getting rid of the absolute value. Okay. So that's how you solve homogeneous differential equations. And the only, the only reason that you couldn't do this is if you get stuck, and it's certainly possible, but you could get stuck with something that you can't actually integrate. So now that we know how to solve homogeneous differential equations, um, so let me, let me summarize this. Now that we can solve, I should say not all of them, but in general, uh, homogeneous or equations like this equals a of t y. So this, this is linear and homogeneous. Let's solve equations like this, the inhomogeneous ones. So the only difference is that we have this extra piece out here. So this is linear inhomogeneous. And sometimes this, this f of t can be pesky because it expo this usually, unless it's a constant, will prevent us from being able to separate variables. So the first method that we'll see in sol to solve inhomogeneous equations is called the integrating factor method. And you can think of this as the product rule in reverse. So the first few steps. First, write our equation of this form. So in other words, make sure that y prime is monic and, and move this term over to the left hand side of the equation. And then multiply both sides by this curious term. Now in my previous, in an earlier slide I actually called that e to the negative capital A of t. It might be a little bit easier to write. And this is called the integrating factor. So let's see why this works. It's, it's not clear why it works at all um, or why it's the product. Remember, I, I'm saying that this method I claim is the product rule in reverse. And, and we'll see why that is, is true shortly. So, okay, so let's let's do this. So let's write out. Um, so let's write out y prime minus a of t times y equals f of t. Let's multiply by this integrating factor. So we have e to the negative, I'm going to write this as a of t y prime minus a of t e to the negative a of t y equals f of t 
e to the minus a of t. Okay, now notice, remember, I said this is the product rule in reverse. Look at this here. And recall that the product rule says that the derivative of u times v, where these are functions of t, is u times v prime plus u prime times v. And look how that relates to this right here. If u is this, our integrating factor, and v is y, notice that the, and this is u v prime, and this term is u prime v, because the derivative, by construction, the derivative of this integrating factor is, well, let's do it on the side, d dt of e to the negative a of t is, by the chain rule, it's itself e to the negative a of t times the derivative of the thing up on top which is times the derivative of a of t of negative a of t and that's just negative a of t e to the minus a of t so by construction, the left-hand side always is y times e to the minus a t, a of t, prime. And the right-hand side is, well, we can't do anything with, with that, e to the minus a t, a of t. And this should always happen. That's precisely why this, we choose this integrating factor. So now we can, well, we have the derivative of some something is that. So let's integrate both sides. Integrate that, integrate that. And now we have y e to the minus a of t equals integral of f of t e to the minus a of t dt. And so now we can... Well, we can solve for y. I mean, this is what we're trying to figure out. So, solve for y. And we get y of t is, well, so we can divide both sides of the equation by this, e to the negative a t, or equivalently multiply both sides of the equation by e to the positive a of t. So we get um, e to the positive a of t times the integral of f of t e to the negative a of t dt. Okay, so let me circle this. Here is our final answer. And let me emphasize, you should not memorize this equation. And I really mean that. Um, you should memorize, learn the process, and the process is so much easier. It's easier to actually do the process than it is to memorize this equation and then apply it. And I know you're, you're likely listening to me thinking skeptical, or you're, you're skeptical. You're thinking, well, I always hear learn the process, don't memorize, and I always get away with memorizing. Trust me, don't, no need to memorize this, and you will see this by the end of the lecture, if not by then, if... Um, upon doing your, um, your homework and doing some of these for yourself. So let me say a few words about when this method works, because it certainly won't always work. But the only reason why it's not going to work is if you can't actually evaluate this integral. And that, that certainly can happen. But for everything you're going to see in this class, um, this is going to be something that you can evaluate. And for Standard, typical, first-order equations, it usually is not going to be that complicated. 
But if you get something where you can't evaluate this integral, I, I don't think our other methods are going to work either. Because as we will see, our second method, variation of parameters, this same integral is going to occur. So I'm going to show you another method later. And typically, if one works, the other one works, and vice versa. So you don't have to worry about which method to use. It's not like inter solving integrals where u substitution might not work, but trig sub does. So you have to make sure that out of the eight different integration methods you pick, that you pick the right one. It's not like that with differential equations. And that's a good thing. Okay, so let's do an example. And by the end, you should be convinced of why that formula that I put up on the, on the last slide is not something that you need to memorize or, or even want to memorize. So the first step, let's call it step one, in all of these problems is to write, so write this equation in our standard form. So that's going to be y prime minus 2y equals t. Recall that our standard form is always y prime minus a of t y equals f of t, and then our integrating factor is e to the, so you take this whole thing and you integrate it, so it's the um, negative integral of a to the t dt, and I think I wrote this as e to the minus a of t last, uh, on the previous slides. So what I do, and to this day, I still do on every one of these problems, I circle this coefficient of y, including the sign, the s-i-g-n, and then I write then the integrating factor, I'll call it the i-f, the integrating factor, is e to the, what's the integral, or the antiderivative of negative 2? It's negative 2t, so negative 2t. And then the next step, I, I multiply both sides of my equation by the integrating factor. So I write this as, so I write as y prime e to the minus 2t minus 2 e to the minus 2ty equals t times e to the minus 2t. I'm not going to write step 2 and step 3, etc. Um, but notice why I do this is this is why my integrating factor is what it is is this thing always collapses to the derivative of y times e to the y times the integrating factor prime equals t e to the minus 2t and let's check that yes the the derivative of this is by the product rule y prime times this guy, that's this term, plus y times the derivative of this, which is that term. So now that I've um, done the product rule in reverse, I can integrate both sides. And I'm, I'm omitting the dt on here. Assume you know it's there. And now the, the integral and the derivative cancel. So this thing reduces to y times e to the minus 2t. And the right-hand side, do you remember how to do this integral? Well, this is something that you, something that you should remember. Um, so how do you do this? So this is integration by parts. So, so recall that you want u to be equal to t, du to be equal to dt, then dv is e to the minus 2t dt, and then v is, well that looks like a u, but it's a v, is the integral of that, so negative 1 half e to the minus 2t. And this is something that I expect you to remember how to do from single variable calculus. And once you have this, recall that integration by parts is u dv equals uv minus the integral of v du. 
So I'm not going to actually plug these things in. I'll just tell you what the answer is. And I would recommend that you pause this video now and make sure that you can actually do this. So if you do this, you, you get um, this integral is negative 1 half t times e to the minus 2t minus 1 quarter e to the minus 2t. And do not forget the c. That is extremely important here. And you'll see why in a second. Okay, so now all we have to do is solve for y. And that's y right here. So we have to divide both sides by this e to the minus 2t. Or equivalently, just multiply both sides by e to the positive 2t. So I'm going to write that like, like this, e to the positive 2t. And now notice that these things are going to cancel. You get 1. Similarly, this is going to cancel with that, and this will cancel with that, because e to the kt times e to the negative kt is 1. So what I get is I get y of t equals, so let's, I want to say that cancels, that cancels, um, and that cancels. So y of t equals negative 1 half t minus 1 quarter. And now don't forget that this c stays along for the ride. So we get plus c times e to the 2t. And that is our final answer. So do you see why you don't want to forget that? that constant of integration. Now this is a mistake I see a lot when grading 208 exams that people forget the C and then they they get an answer that doesn't have a constant in it and that should be a red flag. I mean everybody forgets the C once in a while. You do, I do, but if you get if you solve the differential equation uh, just a general solution and you don't get a, a constant in there then you've probably done something wrong. Okay so by the end so we've gotten our answer now do you see why this is, you know, if you learn how to do this method, how it's easier than memorizing that complicated formula on the previous slide? Remember, just, just to remind you what it was, the, the complicated formula was, was y of t equals e to the um, negative a of t times the integral of f of t times e to the minus a of t dt. And so instead of just memorizing that formula, it's so much easier to put it in standard form, circle that coefficient. That's your integrating factor once you e to the negative e to the integral of that. Multiply by, by both sides, um, collapse the, the product rule in reverse, and integrate and multiply through. Okay, so let's let's do some more examples for practice. I'm not going to actually um, finish these. I just want to practice getting the integrating factor. So for this, this first one, y prime plus 4y equals t squared. So the, so I circle that coefficient of y including the sine and the integrating factor is e to the 4t. So it is just the, you just integrate 4 and you get 4t. So if I were to solve this, I'll, um, I guess I'll do the first couple of steps. So then I multiply through by that. So I get e to the 4t times y prime plus 4 e to the 4t times y equals e to the 4t times t squared. It's, um, and this left-hand side reduces down to um, e to the 4t times y prime equals e to the 4t times t squared. Now, don't forget to multiply both sides by the integrating factor. That's another mistake I see. Some people for, forget to attach this onto the right-hand side. And now by he here, just integrate 
the integral and the derivatives cancel, and I'm, and I'm going to let you solve this. Uh, um, good time to maybe pause it, integrate that. Well, I, this is probably not one I would give on an exam because um, this, remember, this one is, is an integration by parts as well, and this is one of the ones where you have to do it twice. So this is a, something you should be able to do, but it's, it's not a great exam question because it, it's, it's, it's easy to make a mistake on, on a complicated integration by parts equation. So let me say, uh, now, now integrate and solve. In, integrate and solve. I'm just doing the first part of these because I, I want to get us used to getting the integrating factor. Okay, so part B, um, y prime, so y prime plus sine of t times y equals 1. So for the integrating factor, I'm going to circle that. So the integrating factor is e to the, well, I said I broke my own rule, I'm going to circle that including the plus, the sign. It doesn't make a difference here, but it's good to be consistent. So e to the um, integral of, of sine, what's the integral of sine? That's negative cosine, e to the negative cosine of t. So now let's uh, let's multiply through. So if we multiply this through, we get e to the negative cosine of t um, times y prime equals e to the negative cosine of t times one. And now we integrate both sides. And let's see, is this going to be, is this something that we know how to integrate? Probably not. So, I don't maybe there's a way, but I, I don't know of a way to integrate this. I haven't tried. But if this is indeed something that we don't know how to integrate, then this method isn't going to work. And that's actually why I put this problem in here is, so you can see when you, you get stuck solving a first order differential equation. Well, if you can't evaluate this integral, uh, the integrating factor times the right hand side, then you're not going to be able to solve, solve the differential equation unless you get really lucky and maybe you can spot a solution or something like that. So this is one that um, I think we probably are not going to be able to solve, but that's okay. I, I just wanted you to practice getting the integrating factor. And let me make one more comment. I, so I skipped this step. I didn't skip it. I just didn't write it down here because I knew what was coming. I knew that when I multiplied it through, I would get this. Um, I'll let you decide whether or not you want to skip that step or not when you solve these problems. One nice thing about writing the step, as I did here, is it's a good way to check my work. Once I write this down and then I do the product rule in reverse, it's easy to check that the... So let's, let's check that the, the derivative of this product is indeed this. So the derivative of, of this guy here is e to the 4t times y prime, that's this term, plus the derivative of e to the 4t, that's this term, times y. So I did things correctly, and it's, it's, some, it's usually worth to have that extra line in there as a way to check your work. But I didn't do it here just to show you that if I don't want to, I don't actually need it. So let me finish by saying integrate, integrate and solve, integrate if you, you can. And it doesn't remind me as the integral that I've seen before. Okay, so let's do two more examples. Find the integrating factor. Okay, so this, let me do it like this. Let me, up here, let me circle this coefficient. And now the integrating factor is e to the integral of 12t to the fifth dt. So that is 
e to the minus 2 um, t to the 6th. So let's multiply through by this. So now we have e times, so the whole integrating factor, times y prime minus 12 t to the 5th, e to the minus 2 t to the 6th, y equals e times, well, let's just write out the integrating factor times t cubed. Okay, so now this, this left-hand side reduces down to e to the minus 2 t to the 6th y times, or prime, and the right-hand side is e to the minus 2 t to the 6th times t cubed. So let's integrate and solve. So let's integrate in, I can't spell integrate, int, integrate and solve. And now, this integral, how do you, how do you solve that? So in the previous slide, I knew how to solve one of them right away. It was u substitution, and the other one I was pretty sure you can't. This one, I actually don't know from looking at it, if this is something that you can solve. And I don't remember if I got this problem from a book or if I just made it up. But um, looking at this integral, I'm going to say try u substitution. That would be my, my first guess, u sub. Actually, my first guess, given... Honestly, I would plug it into Wolfram Alpha and see if it gets an answer. But if I were on an exam, I didn't, I didn't have that. I would try U sub. And this may or may not work, so you, we may or may not be able to get a nice solution to this equation. But that's not the point. We just are practicing the integrating factor. So let's, let's do one more. So part D. Now I'm going to circle the coefficient of Y, including the sine. And so my integrating factor is e to the integral of 1 over t dt. And remember what the integral of 1 over t is? That's natural log, because you, know, you try what you want to try first is t to the 0 over 0. That's not going to work, so it better be something else. And in fact, it is. So e to the natural log of t is just t. So our integrating factor here is t. So let's multiply through by the integrating factor. So y prime times t plus 1 over t y times t equals t. Well, we can reduce that. Actually, I think this one I'll probably finish because it's easier. Um, y prime t plus y equals t, okay, because the t and the 1 over t cancels. These two things cancel. Now, can I still do what I did before is write this as a do the product rule in reverse? Well, let's, let's try it. Is this left hand, so here, here's my equation. So what did we do before? The left hand side is equal to the integrating factor t times y prime. So is it the case that the derivative of t times y is the left hand side? Let's check. The derivative of this is t times y prime, that's this term, plus the derivative of t is 1 times y, that is that term. So even though we can reduce our write our integrating factor without using an exponential, doesn't mean that the same thing doesn't work. That the left-hand side reduces in the same way. So now we can integrate and solve. So let's integrate both sides. And let me... Uh, Make some space up here. Okay, so let's let's move up here. So the left-hand side is just t times y, 
and the right hand side is one half t squared plus c. Now let's divide both sides by t and we get y of t remember my, my y here is short for y of t so this is y of t the function equals one half t plus c over t and that is indeed my final answer and I encourage you if you have doubts to take this function take its derivative and plug it back into here and prove that yes the derivative of this function plus the function divided by t is indeed equal to 1. Okay, so that's the integrating factor method. Here's the second one that we'll look at. This is called variation of parameters. And this works equally as well as the integrating factor. And what I mean by that is it's not like integration where sometimes u substitution does not work, but trig substitution does, or vice versa. Both integrating factor and variation of parameters work equally well. If one of them work, will work, the other one will too. And moreover, both of them will involve the same integral. So it's not like one of them is any easier or harder than the other. That said, my experience is that 90% of students will use the integrating factor method. And the only reason I can come up with is because that's the first one that they learn. I think if I were to switch the order that I taught them in, I might see an, a reverse effect. And I think I might try that one next time I teach 208 in class and see what happens. But anyways, this is a two-step process. So we have a, okay, so we start out with an equation, an ODE. Let's always write it in standard form. And the first step is to solve an easier equation. So see this f of t? Cross that out, make it zero, and get a homogeneous equation. And solve that. This is something we can do with separation of variables. Next, assume the general solution is, is the solution to the homogeneous equation times some mystery function. And plug, plug this back into the ODE and solve for V. So we'll see shortly what this looks like. So remarks about this, as I said before, this works equally well as the integrating factor method. Um, there is an advantage though. There, there is a built-in checkpoint that this method has that the integrating factor method does not. In other words, if things don't massively cancel when you're halfway through this method, you know you've made a mistake. Whereas with the integrating factor method, it, if, if you drop a sign or drop a two, you might not ever notice that and you're going to get a wrong answer. So that's why I actually prefer this method and I encourage that students use this method. Finally, the variation of parameters method can actually be extended to solve second order differential equations where the integrating factor does not generalize in this matter. Now it, it actually involves matrices, so it's not a simple generalization, but if you learn how to do this method, you can solve second order ones and you can actually solve a couple of second order equations that you can't use, or the, sorry, that you can't solve using some of the methods that we will primarily see in this class. Let's do an example. So we're going to solve the same equation that we've, we did with integrating factor, and we'll see that it's roughly the, the same amount of work. So, so the first step, step one, is to solve the homogeneous part and that is um, y prime equals 2y so we just get rid of the term terms that don't have a y in it and here again it's optional you don't have to write your equation uh, like, oh, I could be careful. I don't have to write my equation in standard form. Standard form for integrating factor is, is this. You can or you don't have to. 
So here's the homogeneous equation, and I'm actually going to put a subscript of h here just to, just to specify that it's actually a different y than this y. And this is something you know how to solve. So this is just exponential growth. So the, so the solution is c e to the 2t. That's the most basic equation that we've seen. So step two is to um, assume that the general solution is of the form y of t is some mystery function times the homogeneous solution or v times e to the 2t. Now, notice that I actually dropped my c here. It turns out that we don't need it. The reason is because we will do an integral later and we'll get back a constant of integration. And so we don't need to stick, we don't need to have our original constant of integration because if we have two of them, they'll just sort of absorb into one. Okay, so so we're assuming that the general solution is slightly more complicated than the homogeneous solution. And the goal now here is to solve, solve for v. So y is v times e to the 2t. Uh, y prime, the derivative of this, is v prime, e to the, this is the product rule, e to the 2t plus 2 v e to the 2t. And now we want to plug, plug this guy back in. So plug back into our original, ah, let me erase that. Plug back into the original equation into y prime equals 2y plus t. Okay, so let's, let's do that. Uh, y prime, the left-hand side of the equation is, is just that, so let's write that on the left-hand side. So now we have v prime e to the 2t plus 2v e to the 2t. The right-hand side, that's just 2 times this guy, 2 times y, so that's 2 times v e to the 2t plus t. And just to, to reiterate where we are, th or this was just y prime. This is 2y. And this t, of course, came from here. So notice that these terms cancel. And that is always going to happen. This is the so-called built-in checkpoint. Built-in checkpoint. So in the integrating factor method, you had a way to check your work when you multiplied through and did the product rule in reverse. You could have checked that the derivative of that step is indeed the previous step, but you don't have to. And so for this one, you actually have to cancel these things before you can proceed. So it's sort of a forced checkpoint. And this is why I like this method better than the integrating factor, is because if these things don't cancel after you plug back in, you know you've done something wrong. So go back and, and find it. Okay, so this cancels. Let's um, Now at this point we have v prime e to the 2t equals t so all we have to do, remember what we're trying to do? Our, our goal is to solve for v. So we're almost there. Let's divide through by e to the 2t, or as I like to do, because I don't like division, is multiply by e to the minus 2t. And if we do that, now we have v prime equals t e to the minus 2t solve for v. So integrate both sides. 
So we integrate both sides and does that integral look familiar? It should. That's the same integral that came up in the integrating factor method. Okay, so this means that V is the integral of t e to the minus 2t dt. And that integral from our previous slide is 1 half t e to the minus 2t minus 1 quarter e to the minus 2t and don't forget our constant of integration. So now the last step, remember what the V was is our general solution is the solution to the homogeneous equation times this mystery function V. So our question is can we figure out what V is? And yes we have. So now we can conclude that our general solution is e to the 2t times our mystery function. So our general solution is y of t is v times e to the 2t. So let's multiply this entire thing times e to the 2t. So that will cancel with these two terms. And it'll, and it'll st stick along to, with c. So we'll get negative one half t minus one quarter plus c e to the, I'd be careful here, e to the two t, because we're multiplying each of these terms times e to the two t. And so that is our box. That, that is our final answer. It's what we got using the integration factor method. And you see it's the same amount of work. So it's both of these boil down to computing this, you know, the same integral. So if one of these methods will work, the other one will work. If one of the methods doesn't work, it's because you can't compute this integral. And so the other one is not going to work either. But again, I encourage you to use this one because it's got that convenient built-in checkpoint. Because if things don't cancel, you know you've done something wrong, so go back and check your work.